Talking about meal prep is one thing, but actually doing it successfully is quite another. In today's video, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks for making meal prepping easier and faster. Meal prepping is definitely one of those things that can make your week go a lot easier. It can also help you save money and eat healthier by not getting takeout. A lot of people have barriers to meal prepping. Sometimes they think that it has to be really long and drawn out and complicated. Other people feel like they don't have the time to do it or they don't have the patience or maybe they just feel like they don't want to prep one thing and eat it all week. They're going to get bored of it. So today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. We're actually going to go over some of the items that I keep on hand in my refrigerator for meal prepping so that I can make quick meals during the week all for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm also gonna share some of my favorite meal prepping cookbooks. There are a ton of great cookbooks out there for inspiration, especially if you have no idea what to make. A lot of them have really great roadmaps and shopping lists as well. And then lastly, we're actually gonna meal prep some items that store great in the fridge. I'm gonna be making some egg bites that prep really great for breakfast, a fennel salad that keeps in the fridge for quite a while, and then also some turkey burgers with a side salad that is great for lunch or dinner. One thing that doesn't have to be complicated is taking your vitamins. Thank you so much to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. I'm really excited to be working with them here on my channel because I have been taking their multivitamin for over a month now and it is honestly the first multivitamin I have been able to take on a consistent basis and you know why? It's because it's mint flavored. That means you don't have to stress about taking them. It honestly tastes like you're taking a breath mint. It is fantastic. Ritual reinvented the multivitamin because we deserve to know what we are putting in our bodies. No matter how balanced your diet is, some key nutrients are hard to get from just food alone. I know myself, I don't always eat enough <laughs> fruits and vegetables, so this is definitely something that I've incorporated into my routine to make sure that I'm getting all of those key nutrients. Ritual's industry-leading scientists and skeptics were over the BS that traditional multivitamins serve. They have shady additives, artificial colorants, and basically excess ingredients that you don't need. Ritual actually shows you each labeled ingredient, their suppliers, and studies, and the essential for women 18 plus is USP verified, meaning what's on their label is what's in the product bottom line. This may seem obvious, but not all vitamins are USP verified, so you don't always know exactly what you're getting. This multivitamin is vegan friendly, non-GMO project verified, gluten free, and it's also formulated without major allergens. One thing I really like about them is that the capsules are delayed release, which means that they're easier on your stomach, so you can take them either with or without food. The subscription supplement also supports you, giving you the flexibility you want and the consistency you need to help turn healthy habits into a ritual. So if you guys want to try out Ritual, like I said, I highly recommend them. They have several different products on their website. I have been taking the Essential for Women 18 Plus. It has been the first vitamin that I have consistently been able to stick to. They're giving you guys an awesome deal. You can actually get 20% off your first month. I'll have a link in my description box below and you can use code JEN-20 to get 20% off your first month. So check out that link in the description box below low. Don't delay, get your discount and get your ritual vitamins today. One thing I really love to keep in my fridge is cooked rice. I like cooked brown rice, but you could do white rice as well. I actually have a recipe in my cookbook for baked brown rice, which is super easy. And honestly, it holds really well in the refrigerator. And did you know you can also freeze rice? Yes, you can. It heats up perfectly. But a lot of times I'll use this to make like my own burrito bowl during the week if I want to do a chicken burrito bowl or a black bean burrito bowl. It's also great for fried rice. When you make fried rice, you actually want to use cold cooked rice. It actually cooks up better. You can also just use it for a stir fry if you wanted to or even a rice salad. Don't underestimate the prep that you can do for certain ingredients. Sometimes at the end of the day, when we're done with work and we've been taking kids to practice this all evening, sometimes the mental energy of just cooking something like rice is enough to make you go, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I'm just gonna order takeout. So even having these simple little things done can really help you out. Another thing I love having on hand is other cooked grains like farro or barley. These are great in cold salads and bowls so you can either toss them with a vinaigrette and some lettuce I like doing um, sort of like a cold Greek salad with some grains in it you can also do this with quinoa it preps 
easily, it stores easily, and if you want to heat it up, you could also use it for a hot grain bowl as well. Um, but it's a great source of healthy fiber and it keeps really well in the fridge throughout the week. I've also made a really great uh, farro and apple walnut salad. I think the recipe for that's in my cookbook too. By the way, my cookbook is on Amazon. It will be linked down below. It has tons of great meal prep recipes in it as well. Another thing I want to mention is roasted veggies or really any type of cooked veggies. I really like roasted broccoli because when you heat it up, it doesn't have that broccoli smell. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like <laughs> when you heat up broccoli in the microwave and roasted broccoli can also be eaten cold in a grain bowl. Like I was mentioning before, you can also top it on a baked potato. I love baked potatoes with broccoli and cheese for lunch, or you could just use it as a side for a quick protein. Uh, but either way, I like to cook broccoli in the air fryer. That's how I like roasting it. And it keeps great in the fridge as well. Another thing I really love to prep on the weekends is like an orzo salad or a pasta salad obviously tons of recipes out there for those uh, orzo salad is nice because you can chop up veggies really fine and include a lot of those in there you could do like a vinaigrette based one um, I also love making this smoked mozzarella pasta salad that is a copycat of Whole Foods it's delicious this is great for lunch on its own sometimes I'll chop up some chicken breast and add it to there or I'll have it on the side of a bowl of soup or a sandwich and typically pasta salads will last about five days in the refrigerator and everyone likes them you can also pack them easily for lunches if you go to work and obviously super convenient because they don't have to be reheated another thing that's great to keep on hand is mango salsa I just make mine super simple with like mango red onion pepper cilantro um, I don't know <laughs> whatever veggies I have in my fridge and this is great because you can put it on top of salmon or chicken or a salad or it's even really good with chips and instead of mango you could either make peach salsa or pineapple salsa as well I also just love having cubed cooked chicken in my refrigerator because it can be used for so many things you can make chicken salad out of it. You could also put it in a grain bowl. You could make a chicken taco bowl. You could put it in eggs. You could put it in a quesadilla. Like there's just so many things you can do with cooked chicken. Um, I prefer to cook mine in the slow cooker. Sometimes I'll just throw some chicken breasts in there cook it on low for four hours or until it's cooked cube or shred it up and you have that in the refrigerator you can also use it for dinner in like casseroles that makes uh dinner time super quick and easy as well i also like to wash my lettuce ahead of time but i prefer to keep it in as whole of leaves as possible so i have a container that i like from rubbermaid that has sort of a drainage tray at the bottom and i'll wash my leaf lettuce make sure it's really dry stick it in there with a paper towel and this way if you you keep it in leaves you can also use it um, in san on sandwiches or burgers um, so that's a quick time saver and then if you want to make a salad during the week it's obviously already washed so all you have to do is chop it up real quick it's super easy obviously washed cherry tomatoes are another thing I always keep on hand my dogs are crazy <laughs> I always like to keep up you know keep fresh veggies cut up in the refrigerator my kids love to snack on them another great thing about keeping you know fresh fruits and veggies in your refrigerator ready to go is that you can also use them in lunch boxes I don't know if you guys kids like to pack their lunch but I pack my kids lunch at least a couple times a week and so having those already cut up fruits and veggies is obviously a great uh, time saver if you invest a little bit of time on the weekend I also love to prep hummus because it has uh, good protein and I like to eat it for a snack or sometimes I'll put it in one of those grain bowls um, like I was talking about earlier with some feta cheese I know that like Panera has like a Greek inspired grain bowl with hummus and feta in it it's so good I've tried to create that at home <laughs> several times but hummus is good with veggies it's also good if you dip grilled chicken in it I know that sounds weird but it's like a high protein <laughs> kind of lowish carb snack if you don't eat too much of the hummus um, it's also good with pita crackers or non bread I love hummus and I love making it homemade because it's so cheap and easy to make at home and a lot of times it tastes just as good another thing I keep a lot in my fridge are the uh, marinated mozzarella pearls um, Trader Joe's has these I'm sure that Walmart has them in some areas Aldi has them as well but essentially what you can do with these is combine them with tomatoes to make a quick caprese salad so the oil the cheese 
the basil, the parsley, all of the seasonings are already in with the cheese. So all you have to do is drain some of that oil off, toss it with the tomatoes, and bam, you've got a quick caprese salad. I get a lot of questions about cutting up fruit and putting it in the refrigerator, especially like strawberries. I would say, you know, when you bring strawberries home from the store, plan to wash them up in 24 hours or less. It depends how fresh they are, but a lot of times they aren't going to last longer than that. Once they're washed and cut up, if you can keep them in a container that has good drainage with a paper towel, sometimes you can get up to three days out of them. It just depends on how ripe they are. Mine usually don't last that long. I can cut up a pound or two of strawberries and my kids can finish them off in a day or two. But if you find yourself with extra strawberries or blueberries or blackberries or raspberries in the refrigerator that you're not going to use and you're like, oh my gosh, these are going to go bad tomorrow. There's a couple different things you can do with them. One, you can put them in the freezer for smoothies. So put them in a quart sized Ziploc bag, spread them out flat so they're not all clumped together, stick them in your freezer, and then boom, you can use them in your smoothies. Another thing you can do with them is make like a quick fruit compote that you can use either on a dessert or on a yogurt parfait. So take your berries, put them in a saucepan with a few sp spoonfuls of sugar or sweetener and a splash of water and just cook them down on the stove until they get nice and syrupy. Stick those in a jar and stick it in the fridge. Like I said, really great with like yogurt and granola, or you could put them over um, pound cake um, with ice cream for a dessert as well. So I wanna to talk to you guys about some of my favorite meal prep cookbooks. And you guys know that I have a huge cookbook collection, but I'm always looking for new inspiration. This complete salad cookbook is really great for meal prep. It doesn't just have lettuce salads in here. There are pasta salads, potato salads, different veggie salads. And the reason why I like this for meal prep is that they do have a lot of information in here about each recipe and if it preps uh, or holds well in the fridge or not. So it also has a lot of great recipes for vinaigrette and salad components and different things you can obviously keep in your refrigerator throughout the week, but totally recommend this cookbook. Another cookbook that I highly recommend is the Bowls Cookbook, again, by America's Test Kitchen. The photos in this cookbook are beautiful and it actually has quite a few different bowl options it's got like soup and different grain bowls rice bowls burrito bowls rainbow bowls chili um, a lot of these recipes only serve two so it actually is great for meal prep um, especially if you don't want to eat the same thing <laughs> throughout the week but obviously if you wanted to make these recipes for your family you could multiply the recipe by two or three um, and there's a lot of great tips in here about you know components to keep on hand to build bowls that you can make ahead of time one of my favorite uh, meal prep cookbooks is this damn delicious cookbook and uh, she also has a, a blog which i've followed for a long time but this cookbook is just so colorful and i have made so many recipes out of here and they are all delicious um, she's got basically tips and tricks for kind of prepping all of this food there's a good variety between breakfast, lunches, and dinners. So I highly recommend this one. It's actually a few years old, but I've gotten quite a lot of use out of it. And then the last one is the Ultimate Meal Prep Cookbook by America's Test Kitchen. Kitchen. Um, this one is kind of uh, unique, I would say, because it gives you a whole week of meals and then shows you how to prep it. So um, essentially it gives you five meals. It gives you the grocery list what to prep ahead and then what pantry items you need and then the recipes. The only thing I will say about this one is if you have picky eaters in your house, it might be hard to find a week that everyone is going to like everything that you make, but you know, the struggle is real. I still think it's a really great concept and a super useful cookbook. All right. So we're going to get started on the egg muffins. You guys have probably seen me make these before many, many times. I'm going to crack eight eggs into a bowl and it's most helpful if you use a bowl with a spout on it because you're going to be pouring these into the egg muffin cups. And I'm also trying this recipe with sour cream instead of cottage cheese. I'll link the original recipe that I use down below for my instant pot. Um, this one I'm going to use the oven. I just wanted to kind of try it out and see how it would work because every time I make these I get questions from people who don't like cottage cheese and even though you can't taste the cottage cheese in these I just kind of wanted to see if sour cream was a good substitute and yes it was. So I have in my bowl 
um, eggs, shredded cheese, some sour cream, a little bit of milk. I put some salt and pepper in there, a little bit of hot sauce, and some Dijon mustard. And I'm using an immersion blender to blend this up. It helps the eggs really have kind of a fluffy texture. If you don't have one of those, you could just use a regular blender that would be fine uh, next I'm going to chop up some ham you could make these with whatever you want if you have leftover bacon or sausage in the fridge or even if you just wanted to keep them as vegetarian you could do that too I have a uh, 12 cup silicone muffin pan here but you could use a regular muffin pan with silicone liners you don't necessarily have to use silicone liners but I've made these a lot and I find that they turn out the best uh, when you use those so I'm just taking a little bit of that diced ham and putting it uh, a little bit in the bottom of each muffin cup and then I'm just going to pour the egg mixture over top of those and you can fill these to the top they will puff up when they bake but then once they cool down they'll kind of deflate back down a little bit and then after I poured the egg mixture in there I'm just going to sprinkle some cheese over the top and then these will go in the oven at 375 for about 18 to 20 minutes um, the recipe that I'll link down below does have directions for the instant pot uh, but like I said you can make these in the oven too they are kind of a Starbucks uh, copycat recipe so here's what they look like when they come out of the oven they look really really good and I just pack them up in a container and pop those in the fridge and then all I have to do is warm them up for breakfast and they make a super quick healthy grab and go breakfast okay so next up we're going to prep some turkey spinach burgers with some purple sweet potatoes and a salad on the side this would be great for either a lunch or a dinner meal prep I'll most likely be using this for lunch but i have a purple sweet potato here and i'm just making two servings so i just have one sweet potato and i'm just slicing this into rounds if you've never had purple sweet potato before it's very good i actually like it a little bit better than regular sweet potato but I put those on a baking tray lined with parchment paper drizzled them with a little bit of avocado oil salt and pepper and then I just roast those in the oven at 425 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes until they are tender and while that's working I'm going to cook the turkey burgers so I have some spinach here that's already been washed I'm just going to give that a fine mince the the more small you can chop these pieces the better um, because you're going to be mixing them in with ground turkey and you could totally customize the this recipe too so you could use ground beef if you wanted ground chicken I'm using ground turkey another uh, ingredient that might be really good in these is some crumbled up feta um, that would be good I am going to add also some minced onions so I'm just gonna chop this up as finely as I can um, I it, probably if I would have had to do this over I probably wouldn't add the onion just cuz it's not something I prefer in my burger but if you're an onion lover definitely go ahead and put it in there I'm gonna add some seasonings and some salt and some pepper and just give that a good mix with my fork I prefer when I'm making burgers or meatloaf to um, either use my stand mixer if I'm making a big batch or also to use a fork I think that it uh, mixes things together the best and then once that's combined I'm just gonna form it into six little um, slider patties so you could make these bigger also but I thought they'd be cuter in the meal prep uh, bento boxes if I did little burgers so I'm just gonna form these into patties and put them on a plate before I cook them um, this mixture is a little bit sticky if you need to you can wet your hands with cold water before you work with these sometimes that uh, works well I preheated a nonstick skillet with some avocado oil and I'm just going to place my burgers in there and I saute these over medium heat for probably about four to five minutes on each side until they were cooked through and golden brown on the outside while those are cooking I'm going to chop up some romaine lettuce for the salad that goes on the side of this it's just a simple salad uh, romaine lettuce with some cucumber and then later on I'm gonna make a little bit of a lime vinaigrette so I'm getting my romaine washed up and then once I spun that dry I'm putting it into these uh, little meal prep containers this is a meal that I would definitely be uh, excited to eat <laughs> throughout the week scraping the seeds out of a cucumber and I slice that up and put it on top of the lettuce in the meal prep containers and and for the lime vinaigrette just super simple I'm adding some lime juice salt pepper and some olive oil and I'm gonna give that a good shake I did taste it and I thought it was a little bit too tart so I am gonna add just a few uh, teaspoons of honey to that to sweeten it up a little bit and also uh, give that a shake again I have these little dressing containers so I'm just going to pour half of the vinaigrette into each one if you are meal prepping salads definitely keep the dressing separate otherwise your salad will get soggy the turkey 
burgers were cool now, so I'm just gonna fit those into the containers, add the vinaigrette, and then those purple sweet potatoes on the side. Uh, these look so good. I am so excited to eat these. You can see I have the turkey burgers in there with the sweet potatoes, the vinaigrette, and the salad. Definitely for these, you would want to remove the burgers to a plate and heat those up separately so that you don't heat up the lettuce. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna share a recipe for a fennel salad. And this was out of one of my um, Cook's Illustrated cookbooks. It's a veggie cookbook that I have. And it has a lot of great ideas for veggie recipes if you're looking to get more vegetables into your diet. Fennel is a great hearty vegetable to use in prepared salads that you're going to keep in the refrigerator. It's a very hearty vegetable and if you've never had it before it tastes a little bit like licorice but definitely give it a try. It is a super uh, unique veggie that goes great in salads. So I'm just slicing this up thin. With fennel you do want to slice it before you wash it because it's kind of like um, a bulb. So you want to make sure that you get any dirt and sand out of the uh, middle of there. So I'm just slicing that, putting it in my salad spinner, and then I will soak it in some cold water, drain it, and spin it dry. Okay, so for the vinaigrette for the salad, I am getting uh, some lemon juice squeezed out. So I'm gonna need three tablespoons of that. I'll put that into the bottom of my salad bowl along with some salt and pepper. I'm also gonna use some Dijon mustard and some honey, kind of similar to the vinaigrette that I made previously, except I'm using lemon juice instead of lime juice. And then I'll just give that a good whisk um, and whisk in some olive oil while I'm whisking it. Uh, this vinaigrette is really good and it's a little bit tart and sweet. And later on, I'm gonna add some golden raisins to this salad and the contrast of the vinaigrette, the tart vinaigrette goes really well um, with the golden raisins. So I put my fennel back in, I'm gonna give that a toss. And then next I'm gonna cut up half of a red onion. Um, this is another ingredient that obviously preps well in prepared salads because it's not going to get soggy. So I'm just uh, slicing that very thin and getting that into the bowl with the fennel. Next, I'm going to chop up some golden raisins. The recipe calls for half a cup of these. Um, it's been a long time actually since I've purchased golden raisins. And when I tasted them, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I think they're actually a little bit sweeter than regular raisins, uh, which is nice. So I'm going to get those into the salad. And next I'm going to chop up some parsley, about half a cup of that and get that into the bowl as well. This would be great to portion out into meal prep containers and then you could have like, you know, four or five containers and eat them throughout the week. Next is about three tablespoons of capers. I just took those out of the jar without the brine and then I'm just mincing those up. Um, that's what the recipe called for. This also gives a nice saltiness to the salad and really contrasts with those golden raisins. So I'm gonna give that a good toss and then I'm just gonna put this in a meal prep container Container, sprinkle some almonds on the top and voila you have a really crisp and fresh salad for whenever you need it during the week so I hope that you guys got some tips for making meal prep less complicated in today's video once again one thing that doesn't have to be complicated is your vitamin regimen please make sure to check out ritual along with that discount code off of your first month in the description box below highly recommend and I will see you in my next video bye